Not too bad. I'll take it. Oh yeah, this is going to be a good one. Finally showing you how I made the best welding table. You've seen it in a bunch of the videos, so let me answer all the questions you've asked about it. What material did I end up using? Well, this is just good old plain steel, and I went with that because it's cheap. You bet I would have loved a cast iron table, you know, once machined down, those suckers are very accurate, but they are expensive. So for me, and probably most of you as well, a plain steel table will do just fine. Now, when you ask for material, you're probably asking what shapes I used, not the actual composition. And I went simple. I just went with one shape, flat bar. Uh, I used some 3 inch by 3 16 flat bar for these top plates. And then 8 inch by 2 inch flat bar for all of the stiffeners that you see. Maybe you can see, I don't know, the ones underneath. Help supporting the table and then the actual legs. Number three still ties into the, actually the material and I get asked all the time, where do you pick up your steel? I do not go to Home Depot or Lowe's. They'll charge, you know, four or five times and that is if they even carry this. Just Google steel supply near you or near me when you're actually Googling it and then you'll have a bunch pop up. Give them some calls and see if they have what you need. Now, I would suggest uh, keep an open mind. For example, I was going to go with a quarter inch tabletop and they had some 3 16 on surplus and so I went with that. I was concerned that I'd have to add some more stiffeners and I started out with 12 inch, I guessed right, because this is just perfect. I ended up picking up three 20 foot lengths. Yes, it still typically comes in 20 foot lengths. If you don't have a way to move that, which I don't, just tell them to cut it either in half or in the sections you want. They'll charge like a buck per cut. It's well worth it. Uh, picked up these guys for like, I think they were 20, like 19 or $20 each, the 20 foot length. Yes, that's a smoking good deal. And then I picked up four of the two inch bar, 20 foot lengths for about $15. Ended up not even needing that uh, fourth 20 foot length, so I got a whole bunch of scraps for some welding coupons coming up. Time to cut it up. If you are currently making all those cuts with just an angle grinder, this is the perfect project to step it up. If this is just a one and done project, then well, get an abrasive chop saw, leaves little cleanup to do, but hey, you will get the job done. But halfway through this, I did decide to bite the bullet and get an Evolution metal chop saw, and this thing is amazing. The accuracy, the beauty clean cuts are just well worth it. The size. So my table ended up being 27 and some change by 60 inches. The 27 came about because I got seven rows by three plus one inch gap spacing, give or take. There is some change in there. Um, I didn't make it exact. Didn't really care that much going that way. I just wanted it longer than 24 inches. Now, uh, as mentioned before, the steel lengths come in 20 feet. So I wanted to optimize that and either go with a four feet or five feet and ended up going with a five, which I'm glad I did. It just seems like a perfect size table for all my projects. Number six, the golden question, how accurate is it? Now, it works for me, okay? It's not perfect, it's not like a machined cast iron table, but for only being 24 thousandths off, that is pretty dang good for being built on my concrete floor. So way to go concrete finishers, whoever built my house 20, 25 years ago. Two thumbs up. And not to get into a comparison, that will be a different video, but it is a lot better than my new titanium modular table, which go check out my last video, just did a mini review on that. That sucker was more than a tenth out, a tenth, yes, a tenth of an inch out, more than that at the end. So, way to go, concrete floor. Kind of begs the question of, hey, if you're doing a fixture table in mass production, why aren't those suckers being built on fixture tables? Let's say you want it even more accurate. Here's what you do. You're gonna do your box structure, just like I did starting out, and then before you go and tack or weld the stiffeners in place, just do the outside and then get your level 
and then you can shim anywhere that you see a gap right there. Then go in and tack it, and that sucker will be flat. I'm gonna get to that in a second, I promise, okay? Golly, hold on. To go along with accuracy, I wanted my corners to be right on 90 and square, and they are. I did it just by double and triple checking those angles as I was fitting up those pieces. To go along with that, you'll notice that I actually put a bar right on the outside around the whole border. Well, I did it so then I could add some, you know, clamps, some, you know, some stops, whatever it is, some vertical pieces. So then if I got something out here, I can just take my workpiece, butt it up right against wherever I want, and it just makes the fit up and set up so much easier and quicker knowing that everything is at right 90 degrees perfectly straight, just well worth it to take the extra minute during fit up. Number seven, how did I do the legs? As you can see, well, it's simple, just two inch bar. I made my own angle. I know, I could have gone with some square tubing. I could have gone with, you know, 50 other different things. I went with this, it works. They're plenty strong enough to hold me. And so I went with it. I know the caster connection is ugly. And if, well, room allows, place those casters in the center of the legs. Where mine is going, I am maxed out on that five feet. So I couldn't extend them or overhang them from the legs at all. Either way, these work fine. They hold everything up just fine. But for future reference, as a design standpoint, you do want to center the load directly over your casters. Buck 50 Harbor Freight clamps, that right there might be the number one reason why this is the best budget welding table. Having slots in your table makes it so you aren't tied down to a certain hole size or fixture setup. Bar clamp, C clamp, ratchet and clamp, it doesn't matter what you get as long as, well, the head fits through your hole. So I did use this as a reference, round it up a little bit, thought, hey, one inch, it works great and that quick setup is the number one reason why I love this style of table. All material and casters included, I'm in it at about 140 bucks. I know, it does help to search those surplus piles. The problem is it's not finished. That's one of the reasons why it's taken me so long to get to this point is I don't know where to go from here. And that's because I've added my little angle rack that works great, I love it, but what do I do? Should I add some shelves or a welding cart? It's up to you, leave me a comment, go. Now wait, before you do go, if you're like me, you'll wanna take off all that mill scale and have a nice shiny clean surface. Downside, it will rust. Trust me, it will. Let's just say after that little accident, I have been pretty vigilant about adding WD, something to protect it from those elements. Now, other people claim you should use wax, do whatever. Well, leave a comment, tell me what you use or what you like, and maybe we'll test them all out. That's all I got. I'm Mechmaster. We'll see you next time.